Hello and welcome to World Talks, where every word matters. I'm your host, Sasha Farbach. Now, enlargement has always been a key cornerstone of the European Union ever since its inception. With its annual report on enlargement released this week, the Commission seems to have more of a muted assessment for various candidate nations. So we'll ask the questions. What is the current state of play regarding enlargement? Does Brussels have the political will to continue to expand the bloc? Now, to discuss it all further, I'm joined in the studio with my guest, Marcin Zaborowski, Policy Director of Future of Security Program Globesec, who's also our Europe Editor here at TVP World. Marcin, good to have you. Hello. Good to see you. Let's start with mm -hmm. um, the first reaction here. Progress or disappointment? What's your main takeaway from this recent report? It is a mixed bag. Uh, I think that uh, in, in, in reality, uh, it's, it's definitely not a kind of a report that, uh, that the last one we had, uh, which was uh, opened with the, uh, a very, in a very hopeful atmosphere, be, with the Commission recommending to open negotiations with uh, Ukraine, Moldova, to give also uh, Georgia conditions, uh, which Georgia could fill in, in order to, uh, to start negotiations. This time around, there is very little mention on uh, on any successes, really. Uh, there is uh, a, a very so, um, sombering uh, assessment of Georgia. Georgia is, is criticized, and mm -hmm. it's the Commission is saying basically that it could be uh, the whole process for Georgia could be could be stopped at this point in time, uh, and there there is no. Um, we don't really have a very hopeful assessment of the of the Balkan uh, candidates, of the Western Balkans uh, candidates, uh, which which are mentioned in this report. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think also the timing of this, the way it was released, uh, not many European officials present, as you said, very different from last yeah. year, and also the Commission focused on crisis management this time around. So again, the, the report sort of not the most. Uh, I think they were trying to hide it a little bit. Uh, let, let's talk about the Balkans for a moment, yeah. because I think there were a lot of uh, um, let's say problem cases, as you mentioned, but also there's some hope. So uh, tell us your assessment, who's, let's say, ahead in the Balkans, uh, who's closer to accession, who's, who's further away? Well, there are two very obvious hopefuls. Number one is Montenegro. Uh, Montenegro uh, opened all the, uh, uh, all the chapters of negotiations, has been involved in negotiations for the last couple of years, and it seems to be doing well. Uh, and uh, the Commission assesses that Montenegro could close negotiations by 2026. So that's, that's really quite soon. But then again, let's think about it like Montenegro is a very small place. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole population of Montenegro is less than half a million. It's a beautiful place. Anybody who's been on holidays should know that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of, it's, it's less problematic because it's not a huge nation like Turkey, for example. Yeah? It's, it's small, it's manageable to add Montenegro to what we have. It doesn't really change the EU. The other hopeful verb uh, is uh, Albania, uh, which has been also trending on the holiday map of a lot of people in mm -hmm. this country and you know in any other countries in Central Europe after years of isolation. Uh, so, uh, Albania opened its first negotiation chapter um, and it's, uh, it's seen as a, as a country which, which is best prepared to advance vis-a-vis uh, -vis other countries which are not doing so great. Yeah, yeah. So, these two positive cases, two hopefuls, other than that, we don't seem to have a, a lot of progress. Mm -hmm. I'm also curious on the fact, I mean, with the, the Western Balkans in particular, in sort of many ways, there's been talk of this lack of determination a little bit. Um, is this a region that maybe Brussels and the European Union as a whole didn't focus on enough? Is that part of the problem, why they're struggling in, in this criteria? Well, the enlargement process uh, is, is, is a kind of, is, is a mixed thing. On one hand, you've got to have the attention of the EU, which I think the Western Balkans have been getting for the last, uh, actually, 30 something years. Uh, on the other hand, you really need to show determination. You need to prove to the EU that your candidacy, candidacy is uh, irreversible, irresistible. 
uh, and that you made such a sacrifice that, uh, that, that the, the EU just basically has no choice, no moral choice but to take you in. And we have not seen it on the side of the, uh, many Western Balkan states, yeah, which have joined the process, then have not really moved with the, uh, uh, with the, with the reforms, have been flirting with Russia and uh, with its uh, geopolitical choices, have been accepting mass uh, uh, infrastructural investments from China, which are very often in contradiction of close links with the EU. So uh, it's like some Balkan states seem to think that we are so geopolitically important that we don't really have to do that much. The EU will come to us and will want to uh, draw us in. In the meantime, uh, let's get a little bit of investment from China, a little bit of, you know, cozier relationship with Vladimir mm -hmm. Putin. And I think in both of those cases, Serbia comes up uh, when you list those points. Um, what's your assessment there, just briefly, because Serbia has also been pulled back and forth. Uh, they got a pretty good score on this report. Uh, but in terms of policy, uh, it's, I think some of them are not quite in line with, with, with Brussels. So uh, the Commission has recommended a number of times to start negotiations with, uh, with Serbia. And where Serbia is falling foul of um, of the EU expectations, it's its geopolitical choices. It simply seemed to be too pro-Russian, uh, too weak on the rule of law, uh, too cozy with China too. Uh, however, uh, there is some uh, hope uh, here. Uh, Poland's Prime Minister um, Donald Tusk travelled to Serbia uh, a few weeks ago, had good meeting with, uh, with Vucic, with President of Serbia. President of Serbia also uh, insisted on the fact that he, uh, uh, that under his leadership, uh, Serbia is uh, moving closer to the EU uh, rather than having cozier relationship mm -hmm. with, uh, with Russia. Uh, Serbia provides now Ukraine with, uh, with aids and, and, and weapons, and he hasn't uh, been traveling to Russia a great deal. So mm -hmm. if uh, Serbia maintains this, this uh, on this, this position. If it maintains that uh, uh, their policy, then it is likely that uh, that it will convince uh, the EU member states that uh, that it is on the right side of the history. Yeah, and already has supporters. Hungary, not just Hungary, but Austria has also been very much saying that we have to have more of these Western Balkan states be in the European Union. Uh, one thing as well, I mean, you mentioned Poland. Uh, Poland will take over that rotating presidency in January. Uh, enlargement has been very much not uh, on the uh, order of the day with Hungary's uh, presidency. What can we expect with enlargement for once Poland takes over in January? Well, as the uh, uh, Ukrainian Prime Minister said, that we are uh, uh, that Kiev is only waiting for Poland to take over the presidency, uh, like counting the last half a year as to be a lost time when it comes to the enlargement agenda. Uh, they knew that basically the enlargement, especially towards the you know uh, Moldova and, and and Ukraine, would not move. So there is a big expectation on the part of Kiev that the, the whole enlargement agenda would be dynamized, that the first negotiating chapter could be open uh, in January 2025. Commission recommends that too. So uh, it's very likely that under the Polish presidency, we will, uh, it will be historic opening of negotiations with Ukraine, possibly also with, uh, with Moldova. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and just as we close, I'm just curious because one uh, question here is to expand the union or to deepen it in terms of more institutional support, treaty change. Uh, what's the way forward in all this in your mind, just briefly at the end? Uh, this is a kind of a debate that we have always had uh, since the beginning of all the enlargement, historical enlargements uh, uh, debates. Uh, so uh, the EU itself is not ready for deepening. Uh, we had a debate here, a discussion about the uh, treaty revisions a few uh, months back, and it doesn't look like that anybody in the EU has any appetite for that. So uh, yes, some uh, structural institutional changes will be needed, uh, but I don't think that uh, anybody in the EU is ready for the deep dive and deepening and federalizing the EU at this point in time. All right, so it's more on the enlargement. I think that will be very much key for the next months and years to come. Marcin Zaborowski, thank you so much for coming and sharing your insights with us. Thank you.
And thank you for watching. That concludes this edition of World Talks, but stay tuned. Much more coming up here on TVP World. Goodbye.